basketball? <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately, sadly. I don't watch basketball no more still. This guy's how you don't watch oh basketball. Oh my god. Really. You're not gonna watch the finals? Nope. Jeez. No. I don't watch basketball no more. I don't even know what NBA is. My Raptors, my Clippers. Damn, it's got all back to back. It's got wear Spurs gear today. I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah, I'm wearing no team. I'm wearing black and white. <laughs> Shit, I didn't even take that in. Damn, I'm rocking the Spurs gear. Damn. That's how it is. Uh, welcome, everybody, of course. Welcome, 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 welcome. I know you missed our face, but we are back. Yes, sir. Welcome, everybody, of course, to another episode, another rendition of the True North Views podcast, Toronto's official, unofficial podcast discussing hip-hop, R&B, and the culture. I believe it's episode 122. 122. Uh, not as confusing this time. Nope. <laughs> We're like, wait, what? Wait, sure? Was it 121? Wait, like, what? Are you sure it's not one? I was like, yo, it's 121. I, th- I think... Um, I think we're getting a little bit more professional at this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We try, we try. Episode we 122, like I said, thank you guys so much for listening to us. We had to take the week off last week. Yes. We will get into why that occurred. Yes, you will. Um, now, I guess, be well. before we get into it, we got to introduce ourselves. Yeah, I think I know who you are. I go by the name of Harris. Y'all know me, and if you don't, you will now. I am the skirt master, Mr. Triple Double himself, zero assist. Cheese. Cheese. Stealing 70 mil from the TTC. Cheese. You already know me, just Shola, and as usual, we are giving you our views from the perspective of a couple of first generation, I can say now, Canadians. Wow. How convenient. How convenient. It works. Baby. Somehow it works. It Somehow works. We, we figured it out. Um, let's let people know where they can find us, of course. Please follow us on Twitter. Please follow us on YouTube. Please follow us on Instagram. Instagram. We go by the at the same at on all three uh, all three Uniform platforms. Uniform is course. important. At True North Views. Please follow us on all three platforms on our YouTube. What you will find full episodic experience. What are we wearing? I'm not. I mean, the Raptors shirt is still up because I didn't think about what to replace it with. No. <laughs> no, no we yeah. still got a rep. We still, we still, still got a rep. Fans. Um, regardless, it, it is what it is. They did good. They did good. Um, so please check our YouTube to see what our background is looking like. It might just change on you. You never quite know. Um, on our Instagram, of course, you will find our 60 second sound bites for the week. Uh, changing that up a little bit as well. Trying to get the, the 30 second sound bites in there as well. Um, the 60 second sound bites, of course, will be direct topical discussion of different things or different, you know, storylines that may have yep. happened for the week or different music reviews, as an example. Uh, the 30 second sound bites, the idea behind those is shit, no matter where you listen to the pod, it's fire. It's fire. You just pick up any, anywhere. Pick up literally any 30. That's literally mm-hmm. what we're doing on yep. the app is any 30 second sounds. It just grabs it, grab and says, it, that's it, upload it. And you're going to enjoy listening to it. Yes. Um, so hopefully you kind of get a, a, a sense of not only the topics that we discover, but also kind of that natural sense of what we sound like as well. So please check out our Instagram and, and view all of that please content. Do, please Follow do. Follow us on there and share that page. We definitely appreciate it. Post it on your stories. You know what I'm saying? Uh, on our Twitter, of course, you will find random liking, random tweeting, random retweeting, hashtag of the day topic of the day whatever it may be just know that if you see any tweeting spree from the at true north views twitter account 100 percent likely at this point that that spree happened while i was back home smoking legal. meditating meditation you see is very very important very, very, very important it teaches you two things it teaches you awareness it teaches you acceptance and if you can get those two things off you figured out the cheat code to life yes, you did yeah you know i'm saying now in usual pre potpourri fashion we're going to ask what's new in the mind body heart soul etc what's going on this week how was last week i guess we both have kind of major updates given the fact that we both took a week off yes or we took an episode off yes i should say so week. uh who, who who's gonna start that all starts okay let's um hear. last week you were there my niece's birthday Yes. That was on Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. I was oh, there. Yes. So um, that, that cameraman. That, uh, <laughs> this guy, guys, got use that skill. Yo, it was tough, man, because anyone who knows cameras, um, I have a Canon SL2. Nothing crazy. I'm yeah. not gonna act like I'm a shooter like that. But the camera that was pulled out, <laughs> I was aged. Was a Canon T2i. 
Now, if you don't know the T2i, the T2i came out, we looked it up, in like 07. Fam, there's been T3, T4, T5, T6, T7. T7. Is there T8 yet? Or did you cancel after? T100, TSL1, <laughs> SL2, <laughs> SL3. Trust me, bear models came out after that. <laughs> a lot of models came out. Um, and I seen the camera, and the camera looked like the last time they used it was 07. It probably was, not even going to lie. So they're like, do you know what I use the camera? I'm like, mm. So, yeah, what I was made last year in the last five years. I'm like, it was a moment. It was a moment mm. where I was like, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm. So, so if I say yes, I got to do this. I know how to. I know how to beat a shooter. Listen, let's Shout talk about it. Shout I know how to beat a shooter. So a I gun. have the responsibility of saying yes. Okay. So I hope um, you know many moons from now when your family looks at the pics. Well, I haven't looked at it yet. Hopefully they say it turned out all right because I think I did good, man. I think I did good. But what else? And then, well, the next day, I was off to Calgary. Uh, Calgary, Alberta. Alberta. Alberta is a province in Canada, as I said last week. Or Western this Canada. Week. It's Western. It's about four hours away from, four hour flight from Toronto. Um, yeah, that's where I was up until Thursday. And I'm back here recording, you know. Uh, wait. Wait. Well, we didn't Banff is. Well, Banff is in, it's not in Calgary, it's in Alberta. Okay, I'm like, wait, I'm. Well, we didn't finish. I didn't really finish. I didn't my really fault. finish that, expanding. That, that's, that's my fault. Then my fault. Yeah, it's all I'm, good. I'm gonna back off. No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought you want to step in. That's why like you step in, and I'll be like, okay, and come. Nah, I mean, I wasn't there. It's crazy how your week was. Oh, oh, oh my! It's all good. Talk. I'll finish it off. Finish it Please, off. Finish it off. We spent um Sunday in Calgary because we flew in Sunday morning, so we spent all Sunday in Calgary. Calgary's dead, bro. Like, Flatland, no? Like, it's just dead. No, no buildings? Like, no, there's buildings, but their downtown is all office. It's not residential. Mm. So when you go down on a Sunday, it was dead. Because all the businesses no, are... No businesses are opening. Eesh. No businesses are open. They didn't have that scooter thing that goes around the town. Unfortunately, we didn't have, We didn't know, so I didn't have the app they on my phone. They did or they didn't? They did. They have a scooter that yeah, goes around? Yeah, you know around? those, like, they, you rent scooters, you get an app on your phone, and you pay through your phone, you tap it on the scooter... And you can take that scooter around like the streets I've and never through the seen park. That before, it's in some cities like LA has it. <laughs> Somebody Edmonton has it because some of other other friends went to Edmonton after. Okay. Um, Calgary has it. So that was I wanted to try that, but I didn't have the app, so it's all good. Shit. Next time I'm there, which would be like sixty years why from now. You, why didn't you get the app? No, no, no Wi-Fi. <laughs> exactly. No Wi-Fi. Oh, real shit. Well, there was Wi-Fi while we were outside when we figured out, and I was like, I'm Fair. not trying to use my dad to ride Fair. a skateboard. But it's Canada wide. Yeah, but my dad is not. My dad's not limited. Your dad is your dad. I feel yes. you. I feel you. Okay, my, no, you're right. Even, I've got a notification at the end of the trip. You reached ninety five percent. I was like, yo, Shit. damn. Shit. Um, got four days left. <laughs> then we went to Banff after Banff. For you guys who don't know, is one of our provincial parks. Okay. Um, I actually didn't know that either. Right, I so just know it's Banff. Mm. I just know it as Banff. I don't know oh. how to. If somebody said, "Yo, what's Banff?" It it's, a, it's a provincial park. It's I guess is what they say. Uh, a lot of mountains. A lot of lakes. A lot of beautiful lakes. Um, it's honestly, I don't know, it was just a good trip. Good to see another part of Canada. It's completely opposite of Ontario, to be honest. I was living vicariously through you guys' stories. <laughs> this guy's um, seen it. A lot a of green lot, screen looking backgrounds. A lot of green screen looking backgrounds. Yep. Um, a lot of iPhone Plus great yeah, yeah, looking yep. pictures. You saw little white screens. <laughs> you know, came out the eight, eleven plus. I got your white screen. I was like, everyone Yo, had screen? portrait mode on. It was yeah, on. It was up there. Um, yeah. Looked like you guys do a lot of hiking. We did. We did a few. We only did like two hikes, two or three okay. hikes. Uh, the first day we did one, and then the Wednesday we did one again. Would you say it was like, and, and this is not to take anything away from Banff, um, but just on your hiking experiences, was it like breathtaking views, or was it just like, oh, these are pretty cool? You know, somewhere, what I'm somewhere to say? in between there. Okay. It wasn't okay. like breathtaking, like wow. But I also feel like it's not. How do I, we didn't go to everywhere. I'll put it this way: for me. Whatever Lake Louise or whatever that shit is called, yeah. that shit was breathtaking. That, that was breathtaking. That was the most that breathtaking. Was breathtaking. That was the most breath t- breathtaking. Other than that, everything else was kind of like in between. Just okay. kind of like we don't see this often, so it was like wow, like true. This shit actually exists. Like you see mountains with snows on it. Like we live in Toronto, we don't we don't see mountains with snows on Facts. it. You know, so that's kind of shit. But maybe to me, I didn't find it breathtaking. Okay, but I did find it like wow, like no, it's still fast. It doesn't mean it's not fascinating. Exactly, I still like, found it You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to like. Yeah, put another level on it by saying breathtaking, and in, in, in that. But like that Lake Louise, for example, that was breathtaking. That shit the sun was came nice. out; it was oh nice, clear was water. We saw one lake on top of um, a mountain we hiked on. Man, you can see the bottom of the lake. That was some group of seven Good. looking background. It was. It was, it was <laughs> Do your googles on group of seven. I don't know what you. If y'all don't know who the group of seven is, look at that shit. shit. 
But uh, yeah, I thought it was a good trip, and that's partially partially why we didn't record last week. Um, just there was no the timing didn't work time. out. Yeah, and we, we didn't we, want to we force. We said something. we weren't gonna force it. I mean, we definitely could have put out an episode for you yep, guys. We talked um, about it, but you got your niece's birthday one day. You're going on vacation yeah. the next day. It's like, yo, fam, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Yo, come to my house at. Come on, man. I was, I was down for it, man. I was I down, we, we, we were down for it, but then we said it wouldn't be our best effort. Yes. Because it would be one of the either rushed or half tired or we're not here. So we just said, you know what? It's okay to it's take a break for the sake of content. Yes. For the sake of quality, I should say. How was Ontario the week I was away? Shit, man. I mean, you know, it was it was a good week for me overall. Okay. Um, like I mentioned at the top of the show, I, or uh, before we recorded, I should say. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Earn Your Leisure podcasts. Yes, you said that. So, I mean, as you know, I'm 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 studying, um, trying to yep. advance the skills and whatnot. Earn Your Leisure podcast for those that don't know, a uh, very business oriented podcast. Two mm-hmm. two black gentlemen. Um, I, I believe one of them is a financial advisor. The other one is an educator, if I'm not mistaken. And they just talk to other people in business, other other you know women, other men, uh, black men, black women, um, that are doing different business ventures business programs and just kind of providing that blueprint yeah, of, okay. of how to make it how to take yourself seriously how to sort of you know treat your brand as a brand as opposed to like one thing that they do for example they don't call themselves their earn your leisure podcast it's the earn your leisure show mm. as an example so just that type of mentality to it's say a you're, brand. you're not, it's, it's you're not bigger podcast. than this. exactly. Show. So I get it. Not to say there's a direct correlation, but I'm listening to them just hey. to kind of keep me sharp. You got to me... always learn, man. You don't always have to. That too, that too. Um, but you know, coming from kind of like a business background, when I'm in the room with business conversation going on, mm-hmm. it keeps me sharp. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying. So. Just kind of keeping the level head with the studying, keeping the level head with, obviously, how do we take this to the next level? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, definitely things are being worked on with the podcast. Believe that. Um, and, you know, again, just been listening to a lot of them. Uh, beyond that, this week, studying a little bit, like I mentioned. Um, oh, I'm trying to think about what I've been doing a lot of reading. I think okay. the book is on the counter there. Yeah, Relational Intelligence, uh, that one right here. Which one? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been reading, doing a lot of reading, Relational Intelligence uh, by Dr. Darius Daniels. Very uh, intriguing like book, uh, to say the least. Um, shit, what else have I been doing, man? I don't know. I had a few things that I, I, had, a few things I had in I mind. I don't know. I don't know. Shit. You've been watching the Clippers lose. <laughs> I mean, you know, my team's disappointed me. <laughs> what can I say? They, they both just didn't Ooh. play to their uh, capacity. You gotta you gotta eat that L sometimes. I feel you. I feel you. You gotta you gotta just take it. Um. Oh, we're going back stage two. Oh. But before um, that, what are you gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say uh, setting up a few things that I can't really yet talk about. Mm, I feel you. Um. So I'm I'm gonna be a guest on mm-hmm. a few different uh, productions. Jeez. Uh, one production is actually going on tomorrow. Yes, it is. Again, just can't speak about it until I know I can speak about it. So uh, I would definitely Indeed. share that um, when the time comes. And then, did you watch Social Dilemma? I've not watched it yet, but I've heard about it. We're, doing, it? Uh, we're doing a deep dive on that um, for, for Blank Canvas Creative. Oh, shit. Oh, good. I gotta so watch BKC, that. again, join that movement on Facebook. BKC Blank Canvas. Canvas with a K creatives uh bkc network on twitter bkc network on facebook and i think bkc network on youtube as well I'm or playing sure. canvas creatives either way google it you'll find um but yeah no we're, we're doing a deep dive on uh the social dilemma mm. just to have that discussion at large um that recording session is going to happen what the day that this episode releases okay Monday. but when does the actual convo come out again not 100 percent sure on that so we'll are the forces involved we'll see with that and again we'll we'll update as necessary but uh i mean that's kind of it for my week if if i'm not mistaken i think that's kind of it like i said just staying sharp keeping myself out there and looking for ways to grow man looking for ways to expand looking for ways to grow so let's keep that momentum going sorry Um, just head back on we're going back to stage two yeah we are yeah, I mean, uh, did they announce it or is it just? Well, like, they didn't inevitable? say stage two, but you know, <laughs> we kind of just hinted. It's just a joke. We cause... have uh, four hundred and ten cases in Ontario yep. of COVID. Um, we haven't seen those numbers since early June. Mm-hmm. Just to put it in perspective, obviously June, July was the height of 
quarantine, if not COVID. Jeez. Um, so was not as tra- I was loving traffic back then. We're back to that. We're back to those numbers. What's interesting, though, people are saying that not many people are passing away from it. Mm, that's true. I mean, that that's... Take, take no, that. No, no, I'm not saying... You're just you saying, know, saying that, as a fact on its own, it's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just where they have it. That's what I'm saying. As a fact on its own, it's true. Take not that in any people. way that you may. We're not um, saying anything else. We're not suggesting anything. Mm-mm. Oh, and I got my jeans hemmed, yo. Jeez. Yo, eight pairs of jeans, fam. Where? How much? My guy at Albia Mall. How much? Yo, bro, eight pairs of jeans hemmed, buck ten. That's not bad, actually. That's not bad. That's not bad. So now every single pair of jeans that I own fit it's perfectly. perfectly. Mm, they did the waist, they did the side and the bottom. Yo, bro, bottom. taper and fucking Jeez. and, and I gotta do that. It's all custom now. All Jeez. my shit. Look at that. My shit like my shit just be there. Like I'm just there. <laughs> so, like, like, I can rock. I everything. can rock lows, highs, <laughs> mids, everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad yo though. i'm telling i can rock lows my guy i see the scene where he opened it up right there exactly though. loosen it up you always said that your thighs are the hardest part for jeans yo my guy at albia mall shout that's out shout bad. out to so right so right <laughs> okay, i gotta I got have my on uh, my winter jacket yo i have a winter jacket that's 2xl yo he does yo and one pair of jeans he added pockets to <laughs> Man, first of all I don't ask me how i bought jeans without pockets <laughs> value village 15 bucks tick you know pockets i don't have jeans that i'm meant for um I told the guy, yo, how much to add some pockets to this? He's like, yo, honestly, it's like twenty bucks still. I'm like, yo, fam, added pockets to jeans. Run it up, fam. I'm dying. That that's. I that's need. Funny. What you got? to walk around with no pockets? It's not meant for you if they have pockets. No, no, it was men's jeans. It, are you sure? Hundo. Okay. Hundo. I've never seen. I've heard. Hundo. Uh, pants don't have jeans. Uh, pants don't have pockets. I know what you mean. Trust they me. They for men. Trust me. Maybe unisex. Maybe. 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 But I'm just saying. Uh, let's move on, though, man. Let's move on. Let's get the show started. Uh, music potpourri, of course. Uh, we low key got two weeks worth of content for you guys, but we gonna we're gonna do it in a very efficient way. Um, last week, I guess we'll start with what happened last week. Just any final commentary you want on that? Tory Lanez apologizing. Anything to say to that? I don't really care. Man. I mean, yeah, that, hey, hey. Well, it what is what it is. is. It is what it is. Um, the only other update that came out with that. Because I was like getting upset that there's an update every week. Because I don't. Wanna, I know, right? I like, talk about this. I'm every tired week. of talking about it. The only other update, and then we'll move on. It says, uh, "This is from Hollywood Unlocked. Take that for what it may, uh, may be worth." Megan The Stallion shot at, uh, after learning that her BFF slept with Tory Lanez. Um, so looks like Megan The Stallion can't catch a break. In an updated report by Heavy. Which is uh what by heavy a source claims that Tori accidentally shot Meg during an argument after she allegedly found out that he had both her and her friend Kelsey, who was what that he had slept with both her and her friend Kelsey, who was also in the car. Jesus Christ! I mean Hollywood stories. At the end of the day, this is why I don't care for any updates. Let's move on with that. So we're not even going to discuss that. Another thing last week was Travis Scott and McDonald's. Hey, uh, the deal. The deal being done. Um, obviously, I wanted to add that to the notes because we've we been talking about it. And yeah, I, I was going to say that. So as a on the receiving end of it now, what are your thoughts on this Travis Scott thing? Because we, we announced it. We were impressed by it. We were like, wait, what's going to happen with it? Then we've seen the commercials. Then we saw the extent of the commercials of what it actually meant in terms of him having the Travis Scott meal. Mm-hmm. Then we 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 scratched our brains a little bit and realized the only difference was he added mustard to a drink or he added um he added barbecue, barbecue sauce, sauce to his fries o- instead of ketchup. Yeah, he, no, he says sometimes I dip it in barbecue sauce. Sometimes, but I think that's the meal now. The Travis Scott comes with a little side of barbecue or something. So they, and it's probably like a dollar more, and Maybe. they didn't tell you. That's funny. Maybe, but yeah, we but, scratched our brains for a little bit. Yo, <laughs> mustard, ketchup. Onions, so what was the it was it was a quarter pounder right? It was a quarter pounder. First of all, he doesn't even get a double quarter pounder. That's first of all, but he gets a quarter pounder with cheese and bacon, and he gets pickles. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know. I just catch anything mustard, that pickles. originally comes yeah. on the sandwich. Or whatever is regularly on. Except it. he added bacon to it. Pretty much. So it's a bacon quarter pounder. Yeah. With barbecue sauce on the side. Yeah, and he gets lettuce and t- and sprite because yeah. you can't choose a drink now. It's sprite. You can't choose a drink. What well, Sprite? Oh, yeah, it's Travis Scott. It's Sprite. So, 
Uh, I did think it was impressive, though. I will say that it's impressive. It's it's influence. Um, you know, five cents on that. If even if they make like, let's say, increase whatever the order is by thirty cents. You know how much money they're making off people just ordering that Travis Scott at thirty cents. And that's the thing is that people are are walking in saying, "I want the Travis Scott." Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a thing. It's becoming mm-hmm. a cool thing to get the Travis Scott yep. meal the same way that people in Canada are reacting to getting the Popeye sandwich. You try that yet, by the way? I don't care, okay. bro. I had Mary Brown's three times <laughs> since. Like you tried to <laughs> try the Popeye's chicken sandwich. My guy, the Big Mary. But did you try the? I'm cool. Yeah, it's not special. I'm aware honest. of PG Clucks. Actually, you know I'm gonna eat some today. I'm aware of special. Chica's chicken. I'm aware of, yeah, of this Tokyo hot fried Popeye's chicken. This is the If you want to go fast food, I'm aware of Mary Brown's. This is the I'm Popeye. aware of Chubby's. Yeah, 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 yeah. but chicken. this is the man. The on, man. What Popeye's we doing? fried spicy fried chicken. What are we doing? Honestly. This is like a seven out of ten, I'll give it though, I won't lie. Seven out of ten. It's not it's nothing Where did special. You, you had it here or you I had, had it? it in um Calgary. <clears throat> it's nothing special to be honest. Like I was like, okay, like I don't see why people are killing each other for When's this. When's the last time you had Mary Brown's? Oh, it's been years. Yo, fam. I'm not saying it's not good. No, I'm not, not saying, I'm not saying that, it. but I'm just saying, yo, go have a big... Yo, please <laughs> go have a Big Mary because that sandwich right now has my heart. It has <laughs> my heart. Um, but no, this is a very impressive by, by Travis Scott nonetheless, uh, and I think it's a salute to him. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, I mean, a salute to him, salute to his brand. Yeah, it's his um, brand right there. It, it really it. means something, and, and it's it's working, which, mm-hmm. is, which is impressive to see. So you definitely want to salute that. Uh, what else happened last week? XXL, XXL. Fr- Freshman Cyphers. Did you yeah. watch these? I only watched a little bit of um, Mulatto. That that was probably the best cypher. Yeah, she opinion. smoked. She smoked. She, she's crazy. Actually, and Chica, Chica. I heard Chica smoked as well. Chica's, I didn't watch Chica's hers. Fire, man. I actually, she was the only verse I rewounded. Mm. Um, look, he sounded bad with the auto tune. Had a Fivio yeah. sound. <laughs> He he needs he needs someone to do his ad libs for him. Damn, like he was doing ad libs for, for everyone else, yeah. and then when we got to his verse. No one did his ad libs, so it just kind of sounded like you know where his ad libs were going. Just it was quiet. Damn, but he sounded good. Though. I actually like the way he sounded. He's, his cipher was the most fun cipher. I'll put it okay. that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pulled yeah, stopped the beat, which I didn't like. Um, back to Fivio for a second. His section was him, Chica, and Mulatto, right? It was him, Mulatto. Oh fuck, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, but yeah. I know it was him and Mulatto. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Chica and um, 24K Golden. Okay. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. And I think his was decent, too. Yeah, he, he was pretty... His was, his was decent, if I remember correctly. It was just no ad-libs. And his yeah. style, because of his drill style, it didn't go well with the beat, in my opinion. But what can we do? Sure. Uh, that's what I can really remember from Cyber Again. This was last week. Yeah. Go watch on YouTube. I do <laughs> think the Cybers are getting back to being interesting. I think a lot of these were interesting. A lot of, like... Okay. Six out of ten of them, I'll say, were really good. Okay, that so, means something. Yeah, exactly, it means something compared to a few years ago where you watch that and be like, what am I listening to? Uh, and I think that rounds out last week's news, or was Mulatto also last week? No, Mulatto was early this Mulatto week. Mulatto was early this week, I think. Okay, okay. So, so this week's that nice. was last week. Um, and that was the end of episode 121.5. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> uh, this week, though, man, what happened this week? Kanye been tweeting. <laughs> Um, there's no real starting point for these tweets. Wait, well, went 100, 100, almost two, over 200 tweets. I didn't even banned. like. So, but I read somewhere he went over 200, and then he got banned by t- on Twitter. Like, damn, saying, like dude, yo, you banned reached, him. You reached the limit. It was only for 30 minutes. It wasn't like a ban. It was a sorry. It was a suspension. I've seen, I've seen people tweet more often, more frequently. More frequently than what Kanye was doing, and then they get banned for like they minutes. get banned. They get suspended. No, I know banned. what you mean. I know what you mean. Suspended. A little time. You don't, you don't see them a little time out. Exactly. Interesting. Damn, that's crazy. Um, where do we start with this? Yeah, I don't really know where to start with this, man. I know Hit Boy had some words about it, um, so I think Hit Boy's words are are, are pretty important. Um, what he said was, "Listen, I haven't been a fan of Kanye on a personal human level." Since he told me face to face that he stopped picking my beats because I work with Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, you gotta rate a man that would be honest with you like that. That's insane. That, like, you still gotta rate a man, but That's I say, yo, so I don't crazy. like you because you Jesus. pick someone else because of so this reason. Now, this was after I produced Niggas in Paris, Click, and a myriad of other songs and projects for him and his label Good Music in the two years that I was signed to them. This tweet is something that I can agree with, though. Um, UMPG 
I'm guessing that's a division of Universal. Uh, UMPG has held me <clears throat> hostage in what the last three lawyers I've hired have referred to as the worst publishing contract they've ever seen. Um, I wonder if that's true. Since I was 19 years old. I'm 33 now. I have multiple Grammys, produced a lot of your favorite artist's biggest songs. Um, on top of turning over 450 plus records since I first signed and UMPG still doesn't have it in them to simply be fair. If they're doing this to me with all I've accomplished through hard work, I can only imagine the kids who don't have big placements or proper guidance. If I have to be the one that gets blackballed for telling the truth and trying to get the next generation free, then so be it. By the way, I produced 10 plus joints on the current number one album in the country, D2, which of course is Big Sean, uh, Detroit 2 project. Uh, and we talked about obviously mm -hmm. uh, the number of records that that Hit, Hit Boy, Boy yep. uh, had produced. Um, so obviously Hit Boy is just kind of speaking to his agreement, regardless of whatever personal level we've ever been at. I agree with the, the fight you're fighting for. Yeah, right. Um, exactly. So I think that was important to highlight from from Hit Boy. Otherwise, I mean, shit, I don't even know where to really go with this. I've mm. seen some people say, show me the good music contracts. That, and that's exactly what a lot of people are saying. We're like, yo, let's see this good music contract because you're, you're also a record label and record labels want to make money, right? Now, would you be able to chalk some of that up to Kanye being ignorant to the deals that he is getting his artists to sign? When or that, do you think he's aware? Like, what I mean by that is um, Kanye is obviously fighting for his masters, mm -hmm. assuming that the label owns the masters, yep. assuming that that is a common trend in music, which it is. Uh, labels mm -hmm. typically own almost the all the masters, yep. especially for damn near every artist, if not, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so we got to assume that Kanye, the label, or, is or doing the same. Is doing right? the exact same thing. Exactly. I want to see the. Is there a point where he could just be ignorant to what's going on? Or is well, he aware that he like? Is he aware that I'm not going to say Robin them because I yeah. don't want to make it sound so polar like that. Yeah, but, but let's let's that use he, that narrative. Is he aware that he's robbing them the same way he's being robbed? Uh, I'm going to assume so. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it's still on you to know that. As That's fair. A record label, quote unquote, owner or head. Yeah. It's. I, I gotta say you gotta know what you're doing. You go, you don't start a business without without trying to know, without knowing how you're gonna make your money. And owning masters is how these record labels make money. And on top of that, you have a team. And that too, yeah. You, you have a team advisor, team of lawyers, lawyers, team of financial advisors, team of people. Like, people that mean, that before down you start you. doing a business, you know what you should know. At all least of on that stuff. level, you have a team. Exactly, on conscious level. So I, I'm not. If he pleads ignorance, I'm, I'm still not gonna believe it. I agree with and that. And if he does plead ignorance, then give everyone their masters. For dirt also, cheap or free. There's also the side of social media response yeah, social media, that um, looks at Kanye's pattern it, by saying that, hey, another attempt to draw attention and for a release. That's how I see it. Right? That's mm -hmm. low-key how I see it. But he, he exposed his contract. I don't know why he's doing that. Well, by any means necessary. He announced the presidency to drop a single. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. So, I you mean, say by any means necessary, I he affected 2% of the American vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Mm. To drop a single. <laughs> That's funny. You're or whatever right, he though. did it for. Um, whatever he did. The deluxe version of Do you even drop that? That's a good question. I don't know. So, you think that this is primarily a primarily release time? related? I think so. Primarily Something's publicity related. He dropped Yeezys this morning, so. Did he? Yeah, a pair of G's he dropped this morning. Yo, I tried to get the uh, those threes, those retro threes, the white and black ones. Oh, the fragments? The fragments. Yeah, good luck on that. Yo, fam, not even close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I checked. I I, I downloaded the Foot Locker app because, you know, the Foot Locker app is like, is like the sneakers app now. Oh, like, did you know? I have to get yeah, that bro, shit. Yo, trust me. Hop on that. I got to hop on hop that. Hop on that. Hop on that. Right Download the app. Uh, they got future releases coming up, and you you put your name for the bid, bro. You it's that simple. Vote. I mean, what do you call that shit that people want? Uh, you raffle. win the ballad raffle. I'm like ballad. Jesus ballad. Christ. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> ballad. <laughs> I'm dead. Like it's a vote. <laughs> and then like it it wasn't yeah it wasn't close it wasn't close. I got the notification that said we got, came up with the results of your entry. And it makes sound like you won still. I'm like, like yo. they start with like yo we came up with the results like. You were selected. Like, that's Let's the next go. line. I'm ready to drop 200 on this, but the price went down, uh, as we thought. Stock X. It wasn't too... It was still 900. It's still 900, right? I looked at it recently. It was 900. 900. I was like, Yo, Not bad. Shit. Um, so I missed out on those. Um, I don't remember how we got there. 
uh, we're talking Yeezys, about Yeezys. publicity stunt. But yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with you. I agree with you. I think, I think um, maybe not necessarily publicity stunt, but I would say regardless of how true or how genuine his message is, I think it is always tied to some kind of release. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a part of knowing your brand value. Yep. Um, and capitalizing on your brand value. Which so in does. a lot of ways, you can't really fault him. Um, what I do like from Kanye is that this time around, he is leveraging his brand power to fight a good fight this time. I guess so. As opposed to leveraging his brand power to say something crazy. It's stupid. Or to you know yeah. run for president or stupid shit, stupid shit, mm-hmm. right? Or or unproductive shit. Yeah, unproductive so, shit. Let's put it that way. At the very least, this seems productive, it and does. I will give benefit of the doubt to say it seems intent. Pr- uh, productive. Productive. And if you're going to capitalize on your brand value from there, I wouldn't expect anything less. Everyone mm-hmm. should maximize their value at the end exactly, of the day. Exactly. Exactly. So if you're worth a hundred dollars, you should get a hundred dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, that's really all I had to say about that, though. Yeah, uh, not Kanye. much to say. We're probably going to hear more again. More to be revealed. It's, it's never the end with Kanye. It's not a one-time thing. More to be revealed as usual. Um, the Cardi Offset news shocked yes. me. Yes. Yes. Completely. Yes. I'm not going to lie to you. Yes. Um. I would read the TMZ link there, but I'm just going to go straight to uh, shout out to my guy, Cozy, uh, run a tape podcast, Cozy, Chechi. They know the vibes already. It's always love. Um, we were talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. Sent the link in the chat. <sighs> it was like, bro, how? I'm going to quote him. I said to him, I'm quoting you on this. So it's two weeks from now. It's, it happened two weeks ago, but we still quote in it um, or a week and a half ago, whenever it happened. He said, bro, how, why? You see Quavo? This nigga's minding his business. Happy <laughs> as fuck. He's chilling. He's chilling. Hell, he getting bags. He's getting he features is. off of his relationship. He is. He's in the limelight because of his relationship. He is. And what do you do? You fuck it up. What? You know what? First of all, what did it say that he cheated though? Because no, I don't think it said he cheated. Okay, a lot, a lot of people social media like, yo, he's cheating, he's cheating, he's. With, I'm like, yo, they don't say they're getting divorced, you know. I think, I'm not saying. Um, he, he, I think there's two sides to why that happened. I think uh, the first side is history. I guess. Uh, history, of course, and listen, man, the women are going to assume that's that's the reason. That's true, and it probably is the reason. Who knows? Like, who knows? That's my thing, though. <laughs> and then there's the joke inside yeah. where we're like, yo, how do you fuck up that bag? Because I know, Cardi B's the bag. There was a response, like there was a response in in Blank Canvas Creatives. I think it happened either in the group chat or in the group itself, and it was like man why are you guys like at the end of the day everyone's a person like he fucked it up what you mean he fucked it up Mm -hmm. there's a person he's good (laughs) he fucked it up but it's like nah i mean we're jokingly saying he fucked fucked it up up. yeah like he definitely fucked. he could be sitting on money the rest of his life there there, there's that side Mm. of the joking twitter let's call it that's perpetuating the cheating thing in addition to the assumptuous side based on his past exactly perpetuating that he did cheat so what does Charlemagne say Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> the lies, the lies, but the lies like juicier than the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So th- that's gonna be the story. Yeah, that's gonna I be get the story. It. But there was a, a Billboard article that came out. Um, Cardi B did speak about that. I only read the headline, so let's see what the article has to offer. <laughs> but the headline read: uh, Cardi B opens up about the Offset divorce, and she says, "Quote: Sometimes, sometimes people really do grow apart." Um, so Cardi B is squashing the rumors about her divorce from Offset. The WAP rapper uh, the, hopped on the, Instagram the, Live so on Friday, September 18th to thank her fans for all the love and prayers that they've been sending her. However, I really don't need it. I'm okay, she added. I wanted to let y'all know that I have not shed not one tear. I love when people say that. I have not shed not like... Well, not have <laughs> not shed not... <laughs> too many double negatives. <laughs> Um, Every single time that this guy has been so crazy, so fucked up, and it it hits the media, I'm always crying, I'm always sad, because I don't like that type of shit, she continued. This time, I wasn't crying. Uh, You want to know why? The reason for my divorce is not because none of that shit ever happened before. It's not because of cheating. I'm seeing people be like, oh, he has a baby on the way. I don't know if that's true or not. That's a whole fucking complete lie, she says. That's the second time people are trying to pin babies over here. No. That's bullshit. 
I just got tired of fucking arguing, she <laughs> says, or she admitted. I got tired of not seeing things eye to eye, and when you feel like it's just not the same anymore before you actually get cheated on, I'd rather just leave. Mm. Um, so that, that kind of speaks on that. Um, so it's not cheating, people. You just hope that it's, it's amicable. You hope that it, there's no dragging going on in public as a result of this. Yeah, too. Yeah, to your daughter. Um, Let's keep this nice and civil. And hopefully, they just they handle it the way they need to handle it. If if they're, if it just really is a separation of perspectives, then it's um, a separation. Then there's really nothing you can do about that. Just move on. Right, you got to move on. So hopefully, uh, both of them are in good mental health. Both hopefully, both of them stay in good mental health and um, figure out their woes from there. Um, where do we want to go next? Uh, mulatto. Yeah, yeah. Did no, you see this shit? No, what she said. First of all, I didn't know it was mulatto in the video, cause I thought it was just some like TikTok person. I don't know if you saw this shit. No, I've not seen this video at all. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna play a video mulatto here. Calls her, no, see if oh, I can find God. it. Yeah, I found it. So the video, she's getting her hair done. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is my assistant and my hairstylist. <laughs> And my best friend. And, and my pet fucking orangutan. <laughs> That's my chia pet. That's all good. <laughs> you said I'm almost done? I can't tell. You're almost done. Stop playing. No, I can't tell. You're almost done. This is what you call almost done? You're almost done. Stop Your playing. pussy is well done. <laughs> funny. Pet fucking orangutan. And my pet fucking orangutan. <laughs> that's my chia pet. That's so that's what that's what has people up in arms. Um, Mulatto, of course, is a a mixed rapper. In case you didn't know by the name. So just like Logic, she is half white. <laughs> is she now? Is Logic half white? Right. <laughs> um, and she's referring to her hairstylist, uh, you know, darker skinned woman, um, and says. You know, you hear a few things. This is my hairstylist. This is my best friend. This is my pet orangutan. Mm. And then the, the 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 darker skinned friend was like, "Oh, don't worry. This is my chia pet." Like, obviously, you yeah. she felt the vibe. She, she was she, like, she knew what, you. She knew, like, yo, you need to cut that shit out quick. Let me go let ahead me, and correct. Let, this. let me save you. Let me try to save you. Um, what do you think about this? <laughs> I feel both. I feel two ways. I feel like. If she's your friend, I'm assuming, and based off the friend's reaction, it's not her first time calling her that. And maybe she, you know what, as a friend, you know, she she don't mean well. She's not, she's not thinking that way. Like, she's just thinking, like, it's a pet nickname. Okay. You know? That's what, because I'm seeing, like, the friend's not, like, freaking out. No, the friend's acting like it's normal. Right. But corrected, almost like, yo, don't say that shit on camera. Right. But at the same time, you got to be aware of what you're saying. Yeah. And... If Malala does not mean that with any disrespect, and she, I don't know what her response is. If she came out apologizing and says, you know what, I didn't realize it, I would understand. Because, you know, we're, think, we're learning. But if she's just like, nah, like, I didn't do anything wrong, then that's different. Going back to your first point, you mentioned um, the friend didn't really react in any, in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think a reaction, I don't think a lack of reaction means anything only because not everyone's confrontational. That's not true. everyone not everyone has confronted their friends but it's the way she like tried to change like, oh this is my chia pet yeah like, that 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 way that because that means that, that she realized discomfort that's but it made me just realize that she realized what mulatto said right, right. that i'm putting it that way that's why i'm saying it may not or maybe she tried to deal with it separately mm -hmm. yeah i mean and i just don't know how to react to this like i feel like i don't know I think I mean she should have said it of course yeah I mean it, it's 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 tough it's tough to react to because you know like you said you don't really know how to react to it um, and it's their friendship too it's not what you what you do know is the responses that you see all I can really mm -hmm. go based on is the responses that I see and I saw people not appreciating this right um and She's young. She's 20 years old. Yeah, she's, she's young. She's a kid, right? Uh, that doesn't excuse anything. Oh, no. Nothing excuses nothing. But it does say I'm not surprised. And that, that's why I that said... That something like that would happen. I wanted to come out and apologize and be like, yo, I realized what I said. I wasn't thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I've caught this in the past, but, you know, seeing people's reaction, I realized... I see where it, yeah. it went left. I see. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's all I want from her, to just say, yo, 
I fucked up. My mm-hmm. bad. Because I'm not above people fucking up. Like, maybe in, without without live, they call themselves pet names like this all the time and it's fine. Yeah. But you've made it public at this point and, you've, and now you see people's reaction. You should learn. And once you, you put it out to the public, you know that you're susceptible to, exactly. to public opinion. Yes. Right? So, and that's why I don't want to go off on her right now saying, yo, she's dumb. She still should change her name. I've said that from the beginning. I still don't like her because of her name. Mm-hmm. But... And I, mean, I feel like that that's what doesn't help her case even more. I, th- I thought about the name thing. <laughs> yeah, you like it? No, I don't. Oh. I, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. But um not to say I don't care, but <laughs> if a rapper called himself Lil Nigga, <laughs> are you offended? Yes. Are you really? Don't call yourself that. Like, no, <laughs> like you don't do that. Like, no nah, man. <laughs> like, no, you don't do that. I don't know if I'm that offended by that. <laughs> like who am I to who am I to talk on 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 mixed folks business? That that ain't me. Yeah, I know, but like it's still a bad. It's like it's a derogatory term. I know what you mean. That's man. just what it is. Like it's just the mean. fact that it's a derogatory term is what a it lot means. of people have said. You know what? I'm gonna just call her Big Lotto. Um, Big, that, that's that's, her, that's her um her like her username. Her, her Instagram. Thing, right? Big Lotto. You know what? I'll fuck with that. I'll call her Big Lotto. So just no call more. her Big Lotto. I'm gonna call her Big Lotto going forward. And that's it. Shout out to Big Lotto. That's it. Um, where are we going next? Minaj, Minaj. Oh yeah, <laughs> Onika, Onika, Man- Tanya, Mirage. Mirage. Um, something I thought was very important to discuss: Nicki Minaj's uh, legal dispute sure. came to a verdict. Let me see if I can pull that up here. This is a Vulture article. I think what I quoted is the only relevant part. So Nicki Minaj scores a win in a legal battle with Tracy Chapman. Uh, what was very interesting about this legal battle, before I really start to read um, verbatim, is that essentially what it was was that Nicki Minaj had made a song that was not released, mm-hmm. right? This song was, you know, it used the sample of, I guess, a song that is owned by Tracy Chapman. Yep. Right? But it has not been released. But Nicki Minaj sent it to Funk Flex. Funk mm-hmm. Flex played it on the radio. Not like on the radio as a song yeah on but the it's radio not like, as like a snippet yeah. type thing and boom Nicki Minaj got sued mm. so it was it was almost like Nicki Minaj was, and, and Nicki Minaj was talking about this suit for a while now she's saying like hey like this is a very important lawsuit like you guys like pray for me on this da 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 like it's very important because what it essentially states and, and what it insinuates is that if you're creating something and you're using inspiration or, or let's talk about the process you create yeah. something you use inspiration, it's finished, you determine if you like it, you mix and master it, you clear all your samples, mm-hmm. then you release it. Yeah. Look at which point did I say you clear the samples. It's the end. Towards the end. Yeah. So how can you sue me if I haven't even reached that point yet of Dude. clearing samples? Which you, I, it hasn't even been released yet. So I can't, you tell me I can't even use inspiration in the creation process. So what Nikki was saying was that this is a big case because if if I lose this battle, mm-hmm. anyone who's creating, which is everyone, uh-huh. anyone who's creating that process can now be sued at any point, and it's going to stop creation immensely. It, it's a little different, Nikki, because if the song didn't hit the radio, it's still fun. the whole point of the whole sample thing, or is that you shouldn't make money off something like I did. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm if I'm creating a song, for example, and it's not touched the radio and I'm not clear the samples, it's totally fine. Right. I've not made a dime off it. Okay. If so I if, if it touches if I the, sent it to, okay, so let's continue that example. I now send you the song. Yes. I never told you to play it. But but hey, you're you're really responsible for it. I understand it, that. Okay. I send you the song, you're hype, you play a snippet. Yes, you shouldn't which you shouldn't have. And now I'm sued? You're responsible, it's your song. I didn't monetize. It's you play. You show me what money I made off. But you played. Uh, you but you like you. What are you suing me for? You used my song to make money? another song. One hundred percent of what I made. No, no, you're not getting. <laughs> <laughs> you used my song to make what you and then you play on the radio. Right. You're getting people hyped. Even if it's, even if you haven't made it yet, you've hyped up your song using my song. And I'm and when when the song does come out, I don't know what am I going to make off this. So like it's I get like it's. The, like, if if so if someone uses your picture in a in a trailer, they didn't make money off it. Not even a trailer, a poster. They didn't make money. It was okay. just a poster. But it's like, yo, 
It's the me. Post, but the poster wasn't released. Yeah, no, so I'm put it up. And then if somebody hacked the files... No, no, see, now you say hack. No, okay, there was no hacking. Fuck hack, fuck you hack. sent it to someone. Okay. No I sent it to someone. You're, it's not done yet. He Don't prints po- it, puts it on the wall, Okay. has a show. Okay. I'm a swan. say, yo, why is my picture up? You never told me you are doing that yet. So you believe that Nicki Minaj should have lost this legal battle? I'm not saying she should have lost it. I get her fight. Trust me, I'm on her side. Okay. But her argument is kind of null that... It ruins the process of creating I music I, because I I if I if you don't release the music, they have nothing to sue about. You've put it out in the public. Her fight is for the creation process. Yeah, so don't release it. Saying, don't release it till it's clear. No, I know that. Her <laughs> fight is saying, listen, if I lost this legal battle, the creation process for many artists would now be stifled because people like Tracy Chapman are going to go out and seek things that have not been released to the public. And if I find but anything that has not been released, I'm going to sue you for they, it. She can. That's what I'm saying. She, she can't because of that. Because it hasn't been played publicly. If I'm using your released. sample... That's the as in your, released, in my opinion. Mm-mm. It's the public part. The part that means that it's gone out to the open I'm means that you can what, make a... I'm confused with what perspective you look, look at it this way. If they play a sample of Nicki Minaj, someone may go onto her website and buy a shirt. Just to put it, but this is how they're going to sell it as lawyers. Off that one 30 second snippet, someone goes and buys a shirt, but they use Tracy Chapman's sample. Tracy Chapman's like, I didn't get any money off this, but now you just made $20 off someone buying a shirt. Just I give feel, me an example. I feel like, but I feel like we're losing sight of what actually happened. And, and then that's what I'm, but that's so what I'm saying. The let me point, read the article. The, the whole point that Nikki's missing is the fact that it got played. If it didn't get played on the radio, but she's not. Ch- Tracy Chapman has no argument. Okay, let me read the article. Please, and that's what I'm saying. Please, please. The creative process We're, is not stifled. Wait, wait, let me this. finish. We completely let me finish. This. Go ahead. The creation, the creation process is not stifled if you don't play the music publicly before it's cleared. That's all I'm trying to say. And that's the part Nicki Minaj is missing. Is that if Funk Flex didn't play it, Tracy Chapman has no argument. She's missing that part, but she got sued. So because she played on because it got played on the radio. I don't think she's questioning why she got sued. She's trying to win the lawsuit. She, I don't say that her argument. Okay, is, let me read it. Her let argument read it. that it's creating, it's stifling the creation process is not right. So this is what it says. That's here. What Nicki I'm Minaj is one step closer to freedom from her legal dispute with singer-songwriter Tracy Chapman. On Thursday, September seventeenth, Judge Virginia A. Phillips ruled that Nicki Minaj did not engage in copyright infringement. In her unreleased song, Sorry, which samples Chapman's song, Baby Can I Hold You. I'm going to pause there for a moment. So, are do you think, do you think that Nicki Minaj infringed no, on these copyrights? I don't think so. so but I, the same thing. But I, think, but, her, but I think Tracy Chapman has a, a ground, has a case. That, of that's, course, that's why and, she's suing. And I don't think... And I think that by Nikki saying it's stopping the creation process is wrong because she's pointing okay. out the wrong part. She's missing the most important part. I think you're parts. focusing on a part that I was like freestyling. Oh, I okay. Like, oh. Like, like, oh, I, I thought that was, that's I, why I'm confused. Okay. I'm like, I'm freestyling. I thought that was in the article that Nikki oh, Maja was saying no, that, no. yo, we can't create music no more. No. Okay, no, 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 okay. No, no, that's no, what no, I thought no, you were no. saying. Okay, never mind then. I'll continue well, on. In here. that case, then, yeah, Nikki, Nikki should not have to pay a dime for the snippet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, but I just say, I see Tracy. I'm so confused. It said, in 2018, Chapman sued Nicki Minaj, claiming that Mrs. Petty had never (laughs) had permission to use her song. But Judge Phillips ruled in favor of Nicki Minaj, citing the fair-to-use doctrine. Artists usually... This is her quote from, I think, the judge. I could be wrong. Yes, from the judge. Artists usually experiment with works before seeking licenses from rights holders, and rights holders typically ask to see a proposed work before approving a license. Mm-hmm. Which is um, usually why they finish a the song before they say, okay, clear it. Exactly. A ruling uprooting these common practices would limit creativity and stifle innovation within the music industry. So I'm guessing it's, the, it's Judge Phillips that said that, and that was the quote you were arguing for a second. The ruling, sorry, a ruling uprooting these common practices would limit creativity and stifle innovation within the music industry. So do you think... If Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj lost this trial or this decision, it would stifle innovation within the music community. It would in the way that the way music is shared would become so much more like 
Uh, you sign an NDA before I can even show you this. You sign an NDA before I can mm. even show you this. Mm. Right? Before you can just really say, oh, yo, funk, take a look at this and, it's true. you know, let me know what you feel. Now point. I'll be like, oh, sign this NDA, then I'll send you my music. That's so, in that case, yeah, because it's, it's also about, I think the whole issue was just like, got played. That was the only issue. If it didn't get played, funk she had, no, she had no thing. But that's basically what it was, and that—that's the only reason I was arguing that she does have a ground. Like Nikki was wrong by saying she. Doesn't oh yeah. Have a ground. Oh no, I agree with you there. That's what but, I'm like. I'm and like, that's also right. Like, that you don't understand that she thing. doesn't have a ground, like, and then you feel that's not what Nikki was saying. I'm like, oh, and I get like, that. That's, that's pointless. That's why I gotta read the article. I gotta read the article here because it's like I'm if she confused. won the case, then yes, the judge is right. Like there was no by paying thirty seconds, there is no. Because you're like, okay, you're like, I can see why she, and I'm like. I can see why too. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking yeah, why about? Why are you watching? Why she can see? We both know why she. I can don't see get it. it. Oh, I'm like, what the fuck just happened? This guy thing dropped. Oh my jacket. Your vest. I'm like, yes. Don't be that. Yo, bye. Show done. <laughs> see you. Next episode's in the library again. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, library died. days. Holy shit. That's crazy. Um, Actually, you wouldn't know because we had no video back that's then. That's true. We had <laughs> no saying. fucking video back. I couldn't even. Oh my god. Wow. What a time. The um. Point. Next topic. <laughs> we got shout outs. Oh, shout outs. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. We got through two weeks of potpourri. Damn. That's impressive. Uh, okay. We got shout outs. Shout out to Charlemagne the God. Oh, no, you go ahead. That's shout out to Charlemagne the God. He launches the Black Effect Podcast Network with iHeart Media. <clears throat> Charlemagne the God inked a partnership with iHeart Media, which, according to his podcast, is a 50 50%. Yes. Um, to launch the Black Effect Podcast Network, um, anchored by his own syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club, the Black Effect Podcast Network is slated to debut this fall with 18 podcasts on iHeart, Ra- uh, iHeart Radio and other podcast platforms curated by Charlemagne. Blah, 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 blah. We'll, uh, the Breakfast Club... Sorry, this will bring... Uh, Breakfast Club will bring its replay podcast to the Black Effect Network along with flagship... As its flagship show... Effective immediately. Oh wow! The show averages four point five weekly viewers. Um, here we go. There we go. This is what I was looking for. So other podcasts on other podcasts on the Black Effect Podcast Network include actress Jess Hilarious and social justice activist Tamika Mari and attorney and TV show Ebony K Williams. Oh, that's their own show. I don't know what's called. Sorry, these are the shows. All that smoke, drink champs. Um, the 85 Down show. I know the Noriega show is going to be on there as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's all yeah, for now, pretty much. It's, I, di- I didn't know they were, um, capturing so many of the existing shows. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Drink Champs. All the Smoke, show. that's Matt Barnes in them, right? Uh, All the Smoke's Matt Barnes, Drink Champs is Nori and DJ Effin, and, um, Carlos Miller, DC Young Flan, Chico Bean is... 85 South, they have Horrible Decisions with Mandy and Wheezy, Dropping Gems with Debbie Brown, Holding Court with Ebony K, Careless and, Careful and Reckless with Jess Hilarious, Street Politics, um, Hot Heavy Mess, Untitled, Hello Somebody. Jesus. They, again, 18 shows, I could plan all day reading it, but there's no point. They got um, some names here, Jesus. Yeah, he pretty much went to every God black damn. podcast and was like, yo, how much are you making? I'm going to make you more. Come down with me. How do, you, how do you feel about this? I, hey, it's a business it's, move. It's, inter- it's, hmm. it's a business move. He created a podcast network. It puts me at a bit of a crossroads. It How puts so? me at a bit of a crossroads. There's power in unison, right? Mm-hmm. And this is this is my crossroads that I can't figure out in my brain yet, so I just have to speak it out loud and hopefully it hey, figures it makes itself sense. out. There's power in unison, but coming together takes away from your individual value. Mm-hmm. No, no, you're, you're onto something. So I'm like, hold on, wait. If I'm 85 South and I'm um, Chico Bean in him and I'm building what I feel is an empire, DC Young Fly, those guys, mm-hmm. you know, they, they're definitely a very unique talent, a very deep talent as well. Yep. Is my podcast not now worth only the limit of the deal with the Black Effect Network? Well, is the value of my name ever more than that at that point? Like, I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> I always say, but at the same time, the black like effect I'm, I'm podcast Kauai, network. I'm Kauai on the Spurs. I'm in the system. Nigga, not, I'm an MVP. Not necessarily. I can do so much more. Not necessarily be because this network is going to give you the people that will fuck with you in a way. Rather than you just putting it out there. Yeah. You're already getting, people are coming to you now just naturally. Just yeah. more people coming to you naturally. And then according to Charlamagne, the way he wrote it is like, it's not a contract. It's like, they can leave anytime they want. 
Like it's not. Like, I hope it proves to be that. He, and that's what he said. He said wants to be more of like a partnership with people. Like come build your brand and then do what you want. No, right. I own your stuff. Because he said he doesn't own any IP. Everyone still owns their own podcast. Okay. Like, he's pretty much just using it just to promote black yeah, podcasts. Yeah, yeah. And, and if the, again, I wonder about the nuances. But of again, these I don't deals. know the contract. I mean, you see that contract, I'd be like, yo, I own everything you got. That, that's the thing. Like <laughs> I do, and that's where my mind. And I still don't know the answer to that. Again, I'm just speaking about it out loud, and and hopefully people can understand what I mean by that. There, I I I just go back and forth. I teeter that line of power and unison, but mm-hmm. but get your worth. But you're showing your worth in unison, but. It's just going back and forth. I get so, it. You know what I'm saying? So um, either way, I mean, it's, it's a, it's it's a, a super move. salute. It's a good move. Um, you know, you like seeing people get into positions of power. Yep. Um, Especially black people. And even if, even, if, even if Viacom owns BET, as an example, um, and even if BET ultimately is decided by white people. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um there is a layer of black that wasn't present before. Yes. And that's kind of how I view this deal, is that even if it's not exactly everything Charlemagne says it is, it is some kind of Voltron effect of... of, move, of to move. The movers and, and, yes. and black names that have kind of been on the tip of the iceberg yes. to kind of break to the next level. Mm-hmm. Hopefully some kind of unison can, can help push them. So exactly. I think it's a salute just, mm-hmm. just in general. So let's definitely give them another uh, round the of guy. applause there. <laughs> and the second shout out is in order to Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion. Their track WAP, of course, um, is now eligible for three times platinum Jam, in the United States. Um, why yeah. that's important is because it's the fourth fastest song in history to achieve this feat. Um, and that's a pretty big deal. Did you say the other three there? Uh, I didn't see oh, okay. it. Just ask it. No, Actually, that's a good question because I wonder if it's like a follow-up uh, tweet. <laughs> uh, be like, it's probably like Gucci Gang. Nah. Like, no, it's gonna be stupid songs like that. Like, the ones okay, that little kids play all the time. Like, maybe like Gucci Gang, like maybe another Cardi B song, and like a random Drake song, like God's Plan. Yeah, I want, like, I, my, my guess would be God's Plan and something. Like, I always feel like one of those random, all like really, like this song. That blue yeah. song, not like one hit wonder yeah. songs is always gonna be there. I agree with That's you. That's all like Gucci Gang is probably. Like, I agree there. with you. But, um, but no, th- this, is a, this is a big look. I mean, um, these type of superlative type of records, oh, fourth fastest, fifth fastest. What what I always like about those is it puts it in perspective for me. Uh, I always think about how big the moment was. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mm, know, WAP, WAP is a big moment. It, it was a big moment when it first came out. All the all the remixes of it, all the people using it in their in their in their the way they speak yeah, nowadays, yeah. Uh, in their in their in their speech vocabulary. and communication vocabulary. That's what I was looking for. Um, so I see how big of a moment it is, and and when I can kind of quantify that with a fourth ever, I'm like, oh shit, okay, okay. That's why I think God's plan because I think about how big that was. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, so I I start to think about that that kind of direction, so to speak. But nonetheless, it's a salute to Cardi B, salute to Meg The Stallion, congratulations to both of them, and definitely shout out to both of them. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next section here. So we're going to go right into the new music. Uh, Reason being is our Keep It or Leak It that we had two weeks ago um, is coming out next week. So it kind of lost its luster. (laughs) Or coming out this week, I guess, when you hear the episode. Um, So yeah, we're definitely not going to do that. So we're going to get right into new music uh, based on music that has come out this week. Or of course, this past Friday, Mm -hmm. I should say. Um, not much on the list, but a go. sneaky list, I must say. It's a sneaky list. It's a sneaky list. We have... Oh, wow. I missed some of these songs. I didn't see this list, actually. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Currency and Harry Fraud uh, dropped the director's cut. That's another uh, EP that they worked on. I know they just came out with one. Lil Tecca dropped Virgo World. Yep. Um, Alicia Keys, which I didn't listen to yet. She dropped her, her uh, project called Alicia. Uh, DJ Critical Hype. Dropped another blend tape. That's Andre 3000's vocals mixed with Tyler the Creator's beats. Um, like the Tyler the Creator album Igor, this one is called 
Andre. <laughs> so I, I, I like the clever naming there. Um, Shy Glizzy dropped Young Hefe 3. That's a funny name. I like, I like Shy Glizzy, so I'm going to download that. And that's what I mean by I didn't see this list, because I would have downloaded that mm. for sure. And I talked about it this week. Mm. But it might be a next week talk. We don't got know Money Bag Yo and Black Youngster, Code Red. Shh, I'm going to just stop there. <laughs> in terms of what you listen to? Did, no, no, as in like listening to that album. Oh. I liked it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get into it later. Yeah, we will. Um, Bobby Sessions, of course, this came out last week, but uh, mm-hmm. Revelation Chapter 3, The Price of Freedom. Um, Tuzi dropped Poetic Pain. It's uh, kind of all I got, man. Yeah, um, RBG Duck, he, um, RIP, he's a Chicago rapper okay. who passed away a few weeks ago. I guess they finally, I guess his posthumous album, um, he back. Mm, okay. He's known to beef with Lil Durk and Lil Durk's crew. Oh, yeah, I do know the name. I do know the I name. know that because of a YouTube video I watched. Yeah, I do know the about name now. Um, some singles that dropped, Rico Nasty with Own It, uh, Saba dropped a two-pack. One of them is called Something in the Water, featuring Denzel Curry. The other one's called Mrs. Whoever. Uh, we have Baby Keem dropping a couple tracks. One is called Hooligan. The other one's called Songs and Critics. Uh, Brent Fayez dropped a, a track called Dead Man Walking. Action Bronson uh, dropped a track called Mongolia, featuring Hologram and Mayhem Loren. Uh, Sababy, Sababy dropped one called Gates to the Sun. Uh, Justin Bieber, yeah. featuring Chance the Rapper, dropped a song called Holy. Uh, Young Nudie dropped All White. Rhapsody dropped 12 Problems. Uh, Busta Rhymes featuring Anderson Pack. That one's called You. Uh, Meek, Meek Mill. Mill. Dad Piff Freestyle. That's funny. I want That's how that. I died. I okay. listen to that. Check that out. Uh, oh, yeah. Papoose dropped a track called Kickback featuring Kanye. Conway the Machine of French Montana. Kanye the Machine. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean. Honestly, a bunch of more. That's it? Just, no, no, a no. lot of other tracks, but nothing that I'm really. Yeah, nothing to talk Masego, about. Masego, Passport. <laughs> Uh, it's a real good one right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here. it's kind of all I got. So, we are going to briefly touch on some of the projects that came out last week. Um, starting with, I guess, Conway the Machine, uh, From a King to a God. This was 14 songs at 49 minutes. Did you listen to this one at all? No. Okay. I don't okay. listen to Conway the Machines. Oh, yeah. It wasn't. It was It was me and Rashawn Franklin. Shout out to the Rashawn Franklin podcast. Shout out to Rashawn. Friend of the show. <laughs> we got to start saying that. Friend of the um, show. Shout out to him. We were both saying that when we were having our Griselda conversation, um, that we were both kind of waiting on Conway, not to say the most, but almost yeah. the most intrigued by Conway, just to see what well, he comes up with. That. Because we do feel he's probably the best lyricist okay. in, in Griselda, and I still feel that way, and I feel that way after listening to this project um but he was kind of the one that hadn't or or i should say personally delivered the least okay of of the other members of griselda or other main members of griselda of course i should say or the original members i should say um but no i mean i like this project a lot uh from a king to a god I haven't bumped it in a a couple of days, so I do want to kind of go back and kind of reiterate my feelings for it. But what I will say is that the the sound almost went in a more expansive direction. It wasn't Jay Versace Um, that produced this one? No, no. It wasn't (laughs) Jay Versace. It wasn't Jay Versace on this one. Um, This one was all over the map in terms of producers. Okay. Uh, I think Hit Boy did a few records as well. Hit Boy's on fire. I got all the Hit Boy. Um... But I like this project a lot. I mean, again, I'm not going to go super deep dive on it, but I will just say I liked it. Okay. Um, I will kind of say the same message about Bobby Sessions' album. I totally forgot. I, was, I wanted to bump this album. But I never, I just forgot about it. So this one, again, called Revelation, R-V-L-T-N, Revelation, um, Chapter 3, The Price of Freedom. Track 1 features Royce to 5-9, and then Ooh, that kind of tells you everything fire. that you need to know. Um, this one's 13 songs at 50 minutes. Um, Bobby Sessions, of course, is an artist that, you know, uh, since seeing him live, I've yep. been following him for a little bit. Um, this fits right into it, right in line with his other Revelation projects, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, of course. Which were also, which were really good. Yep. The timing, of course, is perfect for this one, um, just being sort of what's going on in the world. And he's signed to... Um, I believe Def Jam, to, if I'm not mistaken. I thought he was to Rock. No, he's Def Jam holding Def Jam recordings. Ah, uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's. I think Def Jam. I think he's pretty important on Def Jam's depth chart, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if I can bump a record here. Let's see, this one's called "Raised by the Internet." 
Now I remember a time when that wasn't the case This generation was born with a phone in their hand And honestly I can't relate Condemning their actions is all a mistake Offer some guidance and move out the way Say they misguided but only implied in my era A leader said let them astray Off on a tangent Tell a lot like Kendrick Um It's funny that you say that It's actually very it, interesting It was just in that so Maybe he does something But in that song Just for those that What I heard that snippet It sounds like a lot like and, and 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 maybe not Kendrick in general because I was trying to find the connection when you just said it right now. Mm -hmm. But when I was listening to this, I thought to myself, he sounds a little bit like Logic. And, and Logic, you know what? I can't get the Logic sound. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Logic um has been known it's for just, not copying, but what's sounding has right, been known you know? for sounding like Kendrick in a lot of ways. So it's interesting that you say that. But I know you say Logic. I'm like, Yo, I hear the Logic yeah, now. Yeah, it sounds like early Logic to me, uh, and, and that's a good thing. I'm. This is not an insult. Yeah, yeah we're not. Um, we're not that's insulting me him at all. a good thing for sure. Uh, I'll play a little bit more of another one. This one's called Made Away. <laughs> Cowboy gang on missing out. I grab that belt if you forget to throw that chicken out. The homie playing Pokemon, he a killer now. My pants, postal workers, learn to take a different route. And we made a way. Yeah, we made a way. Gotta go through obstacles when they in the way. A little bit more of a fun record. Um, but yeah, Bobby Sessions, that was a good one. Definitely a good listen. Um, Last week, I think B.O.B. Yeah, B.O.B. Somnia. Did you listen to this? I did not. Okay, I good. Don't um, I don't care to listen to B.O.B. Yeah, so <laughs> the first two tracks were like old B.O.B. I was like, yo, I'm feeling this. And it just took a weird turn after a while. I don't even think I finished this. It's think 10 I've, songs, 31 now. I don't album. think I've ever liked B.O.B.'s music. I, I, I liked his first like Even two Prime albums. shooting stars. <laughs> yeah, I could really... No, didn't that's like only, it. <laughs> that's only Lights Guy knows. <laughs> shooting stars, if I could really... <laughs> Still didn't like him. Still didn't like him back yeah. then. Honestly, if they also rate this, honestly, I didn't finish it. I'm never going to rate it. Um, I think I liked about two songs on there. Okay. Um, it's not even worth the listen, in my opinion. B.O.B.'s been whack. And I was hoping this was a return to form after the first few tracks, but then mm. it kind of took a little left turn, mm. and then I don't know what happened. It does feature, it does feature Big Crit on it, on one okay. song. So if you like Big Crit, hopefully you like that. Okay. That's what I bumped last week. Um, I'll quickly touch on DJ Critical Hype. Um, this is a release strictly on Audio Mac. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because I liked his previous blend tape, of course, which was uh, J. Cole's lyrics and verses over uh, Neptune's beats Neptune's, yes. and, and productions. Uh, and this one, obviously, is following that same trend. He's done this in the past. He's going to continue to do these type of blend tapes. Like I mentioned, Tyler, the Creator's Beats. Um, a lot of Igor beats on there specifically with Andre 3000's vocals. And I just got to say, you know, I really enjoyed it. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm not really the type of person to go on a separate app. To, like, I'm yes. the, I don't listen to SoundCloud rap. And that's not disrespecting it. It's just, it's just it's too much work. Too much work. Listen, I watch I the Social need, Dilemma. I need 10 okay? different apps to do I watch thing. the Social Dilemma. So um, I want less is more for me. But this, this kind of puts me back in that mixtape feel that piff feel um okay. more of a raw music enjoyment feel as opposed to listening to something because it's popular or mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it kind of just gave me yeah. more of a, a so, pure form of enjoyment yes um the same way i felt about the cold neptunes one so uh, a strong recommendation there dj critical hype andre Jeez. 3000 tyler the creator uh very good project there um i'll quickly talk about a single and then We'll see what, what else you listen to this week. I um, listen to... Oh, just so we know, I listen to the Money Baggio and Lil Tecca. And Lil Tecca. Okay. So, how do um, you want to go about the rest? Okay. Know. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll talk about then... I'll talk about Armani Caesar. Okay. Armani Caesar, the singer, Liz. Woman singer, rapper. Rapper. Straight. Male, female. Griselda Records. Oh, okay. New to the Griselda? <laughs> A woman rapper. Um, She's known as the first A lady of Griselda. Rapper. But I don't know when she was signed personally. Um, I just don't know their story like that. But this one's 11 songs, 25 minutes. Um, listen, you get an immediate, you get the immediate feel that you're listening to Griselda as soon as you press play on this record, uh, on this project, I should say. And what I like about it is even down to the artwork, it just feels Ooh, like Griselda. Like that is something Griselda, yeah, that's Griselda. And when you play the intro, behind MC and, you get your, you can... and you get your voiceover, let's go to the middle of that. Gotta go, gotta go. Yeah, we work for a living. <laughs> you gonna keep working for a living the rate you go. 
Si. You know they're going to include those kinds of cuts. Let's go to the end of that record yeah. leading into record With two. With your, your hip hop hoes. Yeah. Rizalda. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like I said, you're immediately getting that Griselda feel. She has three features on her project here. This project, like I said, 11 records. Three features. You guessed it. West Side Gun, Conway the Machine, and Benny the Butcher. Um, those are her only features. I like Griselda because Griselda makes you know, like, yo, we are Griselda. We're only featuring our people. Like, exactly. We're not going to put some little exactly. Uzi on. Not knowing if it's a little Uzi, but, like, yo, why would we promote a little Uzi when we have ourselves to promote exactly right um I like i said you know the, the the beat of track two the feel of track two the artwork feels griselda um admittedly i've never checked out her stuff before but well, well can't check out everybody the way like the way that she was spitting immediately caught me on it almost gave me like 90s little kim foxy vibe for for a minute okay um let me see if i can play a record here kim i think Fox. the west side track she was going crazy on Fucked up, eating no real cheese and made me stronger. Real queens go through things, I blow through cream. Y'all chickens go through teens, the hundreds is out. Now they call my dope blue cheese. I remember the cold nights with no heat. Pockets on eat, syrup sandwich on whole weight. I was taught that if you don't grind, you don't sleep. And nigga, I ain't slapping by the week. Team no sleep. It's good okay, stuff, man. Okay, Just like a it. quality. I think that the easiest way to put it is that it's quality music. Um, it is. You know, what I was thinking about listening to her was that, you know, I'm just I'm thinking about this woman's renaissance in hip hop and, you know, the flow millies of the world and the, the big lottos of the world. <laughs> big lottos. And, I like that. I like oh, I'm sticking to big lotto. The Armani Caesars of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and Rhapsody, fam. Rhapsody. Rhapsody. I mean, been around. Yeah. You know, oh Sweeties, uh, City mm -hmm. Girls, you know, Nikki. Like, there's so many Ruby different. Rose. You know, the Chicas. Like, there's so many different uh, artists, yeah. uh, different rappers. And the quality is never dropping amongst them, it right? Um, like, the renaissance is real, ultimately, it is. right? Like right now, I feel like there's a lot of depth in women's hip-hop. There is that. More than I've ever realized. And that's what I was going to say, more than... I was, yeah, that's the best way to put been. it. I can't say ever I've been, realized. I don't know. That's true. More than I've ever realized as well. Exactly. More than I've ever realized. So, you know, I, I appreciate the depth that the field has to offer, these artists are spitting, spitting, and I think Armani Caesar is, you know, another name to add That's to that list. bucket. Yep. In, in the most respectful, I've never heard of her till today. Exactly, I might right. check her out. In the most respectful way possible, throw her name in the hat. Like yep. she's really rapping at a high level. I think the flow is smooth. The beats are Griselda. She's the from features Buffalo are Griselda. Too? She probably from <laughs> Buffalo. Like, um, I, there was a lot to like about this project, I and like I and you. I could see myself. Um, playing it more than once so that's definitely an enjoyable one armani caesar the liz um worth a listen worth a download wouldn't quite have a rating on it per se but definitely worth a listen so so done definitely up, check up. that one out um <clears throat> and then very quickly harry fraud and currency the director's cut um i didn't like it as much as their last project okay i know they just came out with a project i forgot what that was harry called Fox. uh currency let's see here I thought this episode was going to be under 90 minutes. God damn. We tried. Tried. The Outrunners. I like The Outrunners. That was a decent project that came out a few months ago or a few weeks ago. But this one I didn't love as much. But it's Currency coming out with another project. What can you really say? Right. That's all it really was. You love Currency? That's your boo? You hugged her? You guys might as well be married now. I'm just waiting for the wedding invite. Listen. Listen. <laughs> um... No, let's move on. Let's 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 kind of break the rhythm a little bit. Um, you listen to let to me Lil listen Tecca. to Lil Tecca. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Nineteen songs, forty-five minutes. Lil Tecca, Eesh. Virgo World. Ish is right. <laughs> um, listening to this, I'm like, I can't listen to nineteen Lil Tecca songs. Yeah, I can't listen to forty-five minutes of Lil Tecca. You seen that an uh, IG post from like Real Toronto News that said the, he stole that flow? LB Spivy. So when he first came out two years ago. That was the whole joke. Everyone thought he was that guy. Mm. And so his video started coming out. I was like, yo, who's this guy from New York? Mm. Like, and he kept on trolling people from Toronto saying like, yo, I'm better than LB Spiffy. Okay, I didn't um, know By the way, go listen to both of them. I think LB Spiffy from Toronto, I think he's dope as well. So mm -hmm. if you like Loteca, you like LB Spiffy. Um, he had a few features on this. I know he had on um, Polo G, Lil Dirk, um, and he had Nav on it. Um, again, like I said, just 
too many songs. Like, this this could have been twelve songs, <laughs> and I've been I've been way happier. Yeah, Lil Tecca doesn't really say anything. He's a seventeen year old kid. What was he really telling me? He's still seventeen. I don't know. He's just assuming seventeen <laughs> at this point. Oh, you guys, he had really high school, so let's at least give him eighteen. Okay. He's an eighteen year old kid, so you're not telling me much at the age of eighteen. It's true. Um, I'm just there for the turn up, I guess. I don't like Polo G's. I love Polo G, but I didn't like him on this verse because. Okay. He auto tuned his voice. Lil Durk is also on that one. Lil Durk is on it. Lil Durk body. Dude. I like Lil Durk a lot. Of course. Lil Durk is, is doing his thing, man. He is. Um, Showing his value. All in all, one listen, a lot of skips. It's like a four out of ten. I won't even lie to you. Um, it's nothing special. Nothing better. I, nothing better. It was an improvement from his first album, but nothing to be like, wow. Mm. Let's go. This is it. So I'm going to leave it at that. Just bump it. If you like Loteca, bump it. If you don't, save yourself the time. Uh, one quick single that I want to cover is uh, that Rhapsody single called 12 Problems. Uh, I saw her post it on IG. I didn't really read the caption, but it had something to do with Rock Nation. Um, and then immediately I thought about 99 Problems from Jay-Z and then 12 Problems. 12 Problems. Um, but I didn't really realize what the name was saying until I listened to the song. Uh, and a Rhapsody was saying on there, I got 99 problems, but 12 is still the biggest. 12, mm. obviously, referring to the police. Um, so this is a record about the police. Yep. So And, and a very Conscious. very fitting um, for, for, for what Rhapsody brings to the table. Uh, she sounds super focused on this, on this record. Let me just see if I can do a little bit of playback here. Um, it is produced by Don Cannon. So you get mm, a little bit of, okay. a, of a more action-focused beat. Let's go back to the beginning there. that type of beat but let's play the lyrics from this point right here death coming threes every month march every month march 33 nip got a heavy heart it's killing jay i don't get that part cops kill off and no remorse i don't want to hear arguments no more about black on black white on white kill the own two and cops the only ones who ain't accountable black that type of record that's basically what you're I getting like it, I like it. Uh, rhapsody I, I like that record a lot i listened to it a couple times um, and, and staying on Jamla Records here, GQ came out with a project. Um, GQ, you would have heard the name from any kind of Jamla Records compilation project that I've ever spoken about in the past. Jamla's the Squad 1, Jamla's the Squad 2. Mm -hmm. um, you would have heard GQ's name out there. This one's called A Midsummer's Nightmare. Um, I like the name there, playing on A Midsummer Night's <laughs> Dream. Um, seven songs, 22 minutes. Like I said, Jamla Records, so you know you're getting Ninth Wonder Productions yep. on here. And I think the only feature is Ruben Vincent, who's another Jamla Records artist. Immediately, I asked myself um, if these are records that I just heard instrumental versions on Zion projects. Was like it? Zion 3, Zion 4. Uh, I feel like they were. I feel like they were. Let me go, let me go find that. GQ... No. I feel like the end of track two was a was a track that I've heard before, a beat that I've heard before from Ninth Wonder. You probably have. I probably have. If he releases beats like that, he probably say, "Oh, you like that beat? Okay, let's this do a song." This one, yes. Us. That might be on Zion Three. Now that, that I think like about it. That sounds like a GTA it. beat. <laughs> it does. Like a loading screen. Um, but I do like this record, Can't Run, is the name of this specific record, track two on this project. Really how I live, we came. Everything we do is private just to get some public fame. Trick or treat in my city for motor kick cats. Learned about snakes being a gym rat. Life took my breath away. Then Mother Nature gave me my wind back. Um, what I will say about this is, you know, if you kind of know the Jamla camp at this point, it's kind of hip hop in its purest form in some mm -hmm. ways. Uh, it's just rapping. <laughs> you're just rapping, rapping. That's all you're doing. Uh, you're, you're just saying a lot of things. You're rapping, rapping. On track one, for example, he said, "You want to talk with? You want to talk with Pac? I'd rather chit chat with Afina." Mm. You know what I'm saying. Um, you're rapping, rapping. I mean, we love the Williams sisters, but we know who the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you're lying. You're I was lying. like, okay. I was like, okay. I wouldn't say it, but you know. Um, I like track seven a lot. This one's called "Just for You." I think it's my favorite song on the project, the final song of the project. These but still shoot, so we reacting cold. I hate my nephew, only five, and already don't like police. I hate we gotta have that talk with our kids before they hit the streets. Shit, 
Tired of feeling like this. Why am I feeling like this? Afraid of what we all possess. That's why you killing like this. Media lying. Ain't no just us. I see it's just us. Bullets and bodies. Another we copy. They don't even trust us. Just straight rapping. It's basically seven of that. 22 minutes of that. Um, and a very enjoyable listen. I haven't really been on my Jamla catalog for quite some time. So... I'm happy to double up with Rhapsody and with GQ. Um, okay. I'm happy to kind of just continue to see if they do any more releases. Like I would love a Ruben Vincent release or, or whatever they have cooking up. I'm definitely here for it. Um, again, worth the, worth the listen. I don't really have a rating per se on that. I want to give that a few more spins before I really talk about it in depth. Uh, let's move on to, I guess, the, the one project that we both listen to. Yes. Uh, Moneybag Yo, Black Youngster. Code Red, 13 songs, 38 minutes. Talk to me about this project. What do you think about it? Moneybag Yo knows how to start an album. <laughs> like the first, on the first beat, I'm like, yo, Moneybag Yo got me. Every time, even on Money Served, or sorry, Time Ta- Served. Yo, the you first played was beat. My, yo, you played was the name of an <laughs> like, episode is how much I liked it. He just knows how to start an album. Like, he just gives you that energy that I loved. From the beginning, I was like, yup, I love this. I think... Yeah. Let youngster control the cop Why press the bread on twistings off And this shit here very high London cake with berry pie I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna play all that Cause we're probably gonna get that taken oh, down Oh definitely I, I, I really like that I think they have good chemistry I think Black Youngster brought the fun Yes Because Money Bagel seems so much serious <laughs> what, I, what I was thinking to myself was I'm um, like Money Bagel is a way better rapper than oh, this guy like, Oh he is Way better Way better he brought what I call the fun to this to the rap. Yeah, so he just kind of like brought that gimmicky feel. I think and... he, I think he initially, I think the first few seconds of this record that I just played, he came in with the whore, whore. <laughs> he probably <laughs> did. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. He's so stupid. I think whore. he did. Bitch. No, it's money back. Whore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whore, whore. Like, that's why. He... So six seconds in, I'm like, oh, okay. I know I'm gonna like this record, this project, yep. and I feel like you can feel the chemistry between them. Yeah, like I like them going, even though they sounded like complete opposites sometimes. Mm-hmm. It still worked in a way that was like it was enjoyable. Yeah, it, it, like, it, it felt like a project where you know you didn't really get sick of either one of them. Exactly. Um. Yeah, you just you didn't mind it at all. Like to me, yo, um, I was gonna say yo, Gotti, Money Bag Yo has one of the smoothest like. I don't want to say I don't. Flow? I'm not going to call him a new rapper, no, right? Yeah. But let's call him a rapper, one Recent, of the the hottest rappers, yeah, one of the rapper, the hottest yeah. current rappers. Yes. Out of all them, it's him. He, he, his flow is his nice. His flow is nice. Like he he knows how to go with between him and Lil him. Baby. Mm-hmm. I don't really know whose flow I like better. But and his voice helps it too. Pause, but you know, <laughs> his voice case. helps. Just in case. I really like this. Um, I'm definitely going to come back to this. Yeah. A few um, times. Um, a few times. I liked a lot of songs from this. The, the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth I, one. I will say I definitely preferred listening to, to Moneybag Yo yes. over Black Youngster. I will say that. Preferably. Because um, there was a Money, there was a Black Youngster song. I did eventually, like, I got kind of tired of Yeah, this. I'm like, oh, I'm cool. Man. Like, he's and not that, really. That's why I like the fact that they were opposite, so they broke up each other's thing if that makes sense yeah like so the when, when, you, when you're getting tired of money bag yo black Earth comes in with his his verse and you're like okay like now it's more fun and then you're like okay i'm getting tired of this guy's verse and money bag yo comes in like okay like now it's back to, and i feel like that kept me interesting because i was like it was a good balance be good exactly it was, it was definitely a good balance um yeah i mean again I, not really much else to say about it right it, like it, it's two newer age rappers two rappers that are obviously you know carving their mm-hmm. their lane uh in this space and and it's a good project, just it, period. It's enjoyable, exactly. It's, it's a good project, a good listen. I feel like it's one of those listens that you can kind of listen to in, in I'm not going to say in any setting, but you get what I mean when yeah. I say that. You can listen to it in any setting. Mm. Um, it's not like specifically for the summertime. It's not, it's not. specifically when you're surrounded by people uh, partying. It's like I, any environment I can by yourself. I can put this in the ball. I can put this in the gym yeah. while I'm playing ball, Yep. while yep. I'm cleaning, yep. while I'm driving. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it fits a few different. At a situations. party too. And exact. And at a party. And play the at a one, club. Play the one, two, right tracks, and it's bumping. Definitely, definitely. Um, but yeah, no, good stuff there. Good stuff there. Definitely like that album. Code Red again is the name of that. Money Bag Yo and Black Youngster. Let's get off of that music potpourri. Let's ask that question. What 
is in your rotation, sir. You want me to start this off? Um, please. I'll start it <clears throat> as far back as I can go. I don't want to set up Apple Pay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So, um, this is Red Hot Chili Peppers. No, okay, gotta Still, bring man. that back. Uh, Before the Storm by um, Internet Money. Yo, my jeans is crazy. This guy's just loving his jeans. Yo, fam. So I got it hemmed and it's never been the same Look, the, the low-cut socks are showing. Is it not supposed to show? No, I mean, it's proper. That's why I wear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I'm playing. I don't it's know. It's cut so perfect. <laughs> it's a solid, Damn. solid cut. Um, <clears throat> Heavy is Ahead by um Stormzy. Everything Means Nothing by Black Bear. Icebreaker by um, um Lil Barrette. B.O.B. Stranger Clouds. Detroit 2 by um, Big Sean. Dreams and Nightmares, Meek Mill. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about this last week and I said I was going to bump it? Mm -hmm. I love that album. So Every time that came in, I was like, yo, I just want some polo with some shell tops. <laughs> Shout out to um, Meek Mill. Uh, Squitastic by um, Sababy. That always has to be in there. Um, Lil Baby, just, this is Lil Baby. Just in some old Lil Baby tracks. Okay. Okay. It's actually because I went back to listen to... Um, Time certain, not time certain. No, the one with Drake. Dash, oh. the, the schedule is busy. I'm like, yo, Lil Baby was kind of sick back then. It's true. So then I said, this old. So I'm like, yo, Lil Baby was sick back then. Um, Twice as Tall by Bunna Boy. Mm -hmm. um, Fuck Love by Kid Leroy. And um, you know what? Nope, that's not the end. Sorry. <laughs> Trapped, Trapped on Cleveland 3 by Lil Keed. And um, I, said, I, I said the rest already. Bunna Boy. Yep, Kid Leroy and Internet Money. So, yeah, that's all. You know, been tight, you know, been on a trip. So, it wasn't that much time to listen to music as you surprisingly. It will surprise you, but it's not that much time. It's true. So, it's what's true. in your rotation? Uh, my that's rotation here. It goes that far back. Let's see. I actually didn't listen to much music either, uh, just over the course of the week. But I do have here Currents from Tame Impala. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, I like that project. Um,. Twice as Tall by Burna Boy, Detroit 2 by Big Sean. I listened to a little bit of the deluxe version of JoJo, good to know. Uh, just wasn't too, too much in that R&B mood, but okay. I immediately after that, I played Party Mobile. And, <laughs> Party I, Mobile. I, and I was in that R&B mood, so I played that. Uh, I played When I Get Home by Solange. I played From a King to a God by Conway. Usher has a new record that came out uh, last week. It's called Bad Habits. Bad Habits. God damn, I can't stop playing that song. Bad that song is nuts. Um, I like that song a lot. Bad like I mentioned, I've been listening to a lot of um, Earn, Earn Your Leisure podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, so they're definitely on my list. A lot of Jay-Z uh, artists play as well. Just okay. artists play Jay-Z, let, let It Rock. And uh, I went back and I bumped 2088. We were talking about listening to projects that we were promised ourselves. It's a Yo, 2088 is good. That's a Big Sean. Um, Big Sean Janae. Janae. Yeah. That's a really good project. Yeah. I can't believe I gave that project no love in the past. Yeah. I'm that still, giving that. Really I'm still giving that project no love. I don't want to hear Big Sean singing. Shit. He I'm ain't cool even with singing. Janae, I'm cool singing. He ain't. He rapping. He's not singing some and songs. And Janae is singing nuts. Some songs he's not singing on those. No, man. Come on. There's some songs he was no, like, just trying to do the. Oh, man. No. I'm I miss telling my you. girl. I'm telling you. I miss Janae. I That's go. the perception. But. Nah, this th that 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 one's fire. Twenty eight eight is fire. Um, yeah, no. Other than that, it was just new shit. Okay. Uh, Rhapsody. Actually, no. A Muse in her feelings, as well by Division. Um, R and B two K twenty, by by Marlon Palmer. Playlist made by Marlon Palmer, of course. Marlon Palmer. And beyond that, just new new stuff. Midsummer's Nightmare. I bumped more than once. The Liz. I bumped more than once. Twelve Problems. I bumped more than once. And that's pretty much it now of course before we sign off we have to get into the post potpourri yes we do post potpourri we got a couple topics here um i'll skip the prime minister one because i never read details on that i was supposed to read that prime minister justin trudeau announces support for black entrepreneurs and black business owners i read that he pretty much is committing x amount of dollars to okay one of those to black Entrepreneurs and business owners. One of those. Okay. We'll see when that. We'll see what happens. That, that's that's why I'm like one of those. Yes, Commitment. Exactly. Okay. We're all committing. I'm not. Oh, I'm, not I'm not committing. You're one of those. Remember all the money they pledged. Uh, Blackout Day. What was Blackout Tuesday called? Where uh -huh. everyone posted the Black Matters Life yeah. sign, and everyone pledged. And where would that money go? That's all I'm asking. Where you at, though? Uh, you see what happened with Paul Gasol? Naming his um his daughter um Gianna. Yeah. Or her middle name yeah. Gianna. Yeah. Ray, that, 
it's, it's heartbreaking, that, man. That, that somebody was cutting onions near me. I don't, know, I don't know who it was. It's probably your neighbors. I, I remember that day. I, I, th- I think I smelt it too. That's I think why. you're right. I think you're right. Okay. I think you're right. Paul Gasol and his wife, of course, like you just mentioned, named their newborn daughter after Gianna Bryant. So her name is Elizabeth Gianna Gasol. Um, you love to see it. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking Bryant. I'm like, okay, <laughs> G- what was it? Elizabeth Gianna Bryant Gasol. I don't know why I was thinking of dead, that. Dead, <laughs> dead. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, that, that, that's, that's such hey, a man. good look. That's exactly. such a good look for Paul Gasol. You know they had a real uh, brotherhood real. amongst them. Um, and you just got to salute that for sure. Um, so what happened in Rexdale? I heard. Good thing I wasn't here. Yeah, that that's crazy to hear. Rexdale, of course, is um, how would you describe Rexdale? hot? <laughs> what's it? What's it legal? What's it technically called? A su- a, a, a community a su- within a suburban a, sub- a community within Toronto. Like, what would you, I don't know, man. It's the hood, <laughs> man. I don't know. <laughs> it's the hood. Yeah, it's the hood. <laughs> Fuck, man. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it, but um, yeah, there was. Uh, somebody who was titled as a serial killer um, because I think there were two recent murders that were linked to one another, yes. sumptuously from the same person. Uh, I haven't read the details of both of them, but I know one of them was like a volunteer security guard at a mosque and he oh. had his throat slit. Ugh, like it's some fuck. Game of Thrones shit. Um, so i mean i think they have made an arrest since i didn't really check the follow-up on follow that up on but it, again it's prayers to anyone that's impacted by that um city's hot uh, toronto just gets hotter and hotter i know right um, summer's, summer's almost done man it's very cooling down cool down with the weather they kind of have it has really actually they kind of have so yay yeah, <laughs> winter can't come fast enough in some ways right <laughs> Oh, uh, you see what Ty Lawson did? This guy's not to fuck up everything. <laughs> hey, yo, people don't get yo. Just keep shit to yourself sometimes. Just say stuff to your boy, and that's it. We don't need to know. The whole world don't need to know everything you're thinking. Yeah, I'm not a. I'm not a huge fan of really posting everything on IG. I'm. Just, I've never been that type of guy. Um, I've been in trouble for not being that type of guy. <laughs> I never um, want to be that type of guy. I never and will I just be that never type really will be that type I, of guy. I, I move in silence, man. I'm not telling you what I'm doing. I don't need to know what you're thinking. It's okay. You don't need to know what I'm thinking. We cool. So Ty Lawson, who plays in the Chinese Basketball Association, the yes. CBA, um, he's been banned for life for posting on Instagram. Now you're wondering, oh my God. What did he post? Something with the Russians or something. I don't know. It has to be. Right? Uh, no. He posted... <laughs> The following caption followed by an image. The caption reads, Chinese woman got cakes on the low. I might switch up my stance soon. And then the Wait, next... Wait, hold up, hold up. What's the, what flavor cake? Pineapple, you know, banana. You know, maybe he's talking about cakes, you know. Maybe he's talking about... Maybe, she, maybe he's like, yo, I went to this restaurant. The Chinese woman gave me a nice, a nice cake as a dessert. I was about to make a joke from when I used to work at uh, the phone store back in uh, 2011. Mm-hmm. But that would not fly in 2020. <laughs> like That were... would not fly in 2020. So what else did he tweet so I can make sure he's not talking about cake? Um, talking. Let me know what he's talking about. And then the, the next image was him oh, that's on the couch. Those cakes. <laughs> he, he's talking about different kind of cakes. Him on the couch. Um... I guess there's probably a mirror up top or something like it's that. Like he's a, taking a picture a of gentleman's club. a mirror that's reflecting him uh, at a gentleman's club, like you mentioned, with an a, a, a Asian descent uh, dancer on him, Scripper. 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 Uh, and that caption reads, YOLO, I guess, LOL. So again, he posted about going to the strip club, Chinese women having cakes on the low, and then a, a stripper on him. And he got banned for life uh, as a result. Hey. Fair ban or not? <laughs> hey man, I, I don't make the rules in China, man. That's a different country. We all what did we got say? Uh, a three pointer is worth seven. No, that's not the CBA. <laughs> yeah, that was um, <laughs> North Korea, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three pointer is worth seven. The dunk is like minus two. Like, you dunk can't be dunk is 17. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yo, man, I don't um, make these rules in China. So, hey, man. All NBA teams? Let's go. All NBA teams, uh, NBA first team, of course. Giannis and Braun are your forwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harden and Luca. Okay, I, I'm not mad at that. Harden and Luca are your guards, and AD is your big man. Yep, for that about first right. team. Um, NBA second team. I'm just trying to see if I disagree with anything. This is my first time looking at it. 
Uh, Dame Lillard and CP as your guards for the second team. Kawhi and Pascal. Let's go. Let them know. Pascal. Let them know. We're going to talk about the Raptors' demise. But what about scarves? I guess I'm done. But what about scarves? But what about scarves? We're not. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know either. So, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Kawhi about Leonard scarves? and Pascal Siakam. I kind of like the, the poetry there, that, that they're the two forwards on the NBA second team. Uh, Nikola, Nikola Jokic, of course, is the big man for that team. All NBA third team. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Where? If Why? he wasn't hurt, he, I feel like he would have been good if he wasn't hurt. He played worse. Yeah, but he was still an all-star this year, and he still had a good play. All-NBA third team? He, he was pretty good. He he was a person that kept Philly alive, to be honest. And you saw in the playoffs. Come on, think okay. about that. You saw in the playoffs how important that Ben Simmons was to that team. Like, Don't get it confused. Joel Embiid's also good, but Ben Simmons... Over is. Kyle Lowry? Yeah, see, and that, but that, there's some names here I feel like could have been put here over Ben Simmons. That's so I'm like, mm? like I would have put Bradley Beal over him. Oh my God, he got snubbed for All Star and an All NBA team, yes. averaging oh, thirty and six. Only player to get only player to thirty and six and not be an NBA All NBA player. But keep going on the list. Uh, Westbrook is the other guard for that All NBA. I team. could argue that too. I could put Lowry over Westbrook. Yeah, I yeah I get them both. I agree. Uh, the forwards there are Jason Tatum and Jimmy Butler. I'm not too no, mad, I'm at not that. mad at that. Uh, and Rudy Gobert's center, I'm not mad at that either. You're taking out most of the guards are from the West and most of the fours are from the East. We got Giannis, mm. Pascal, Tatum, and Butler. Never thought about that. And then for guards, we had Harden, Luka, Lillard, Chris Paul, and Russell Westbrook. All in the West, basically. All in the yeah, West, yeah. Simmons. Yeah. Um, some snubs, Chris Middleton, uh, based on record. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> based on record. We've talked about Chris uh, based Middleton on record. <laughs> uh, Joel Embiid, uh, of course. I think it's number of games for Embiid. Yeah, he just can't play. Uh, Bradley Beal, uh, Kyle Lowry, a few other names that were that were. 11 there. players got one All-NBA vote. If my computer wasn't frozen, I would click that. Uh, Devin Booker, I think. Devin Booker, was yeah. another. He probably um, got one vote. Was another um, name that was sort of snubbed. Uh, I can't really think off top of the head. Yeah, was, not Kemba. But, I can't think. I mean, oh well, good enough. Okay. I, I don't mind. I, I'm not. I'm not complaining at the list. Yeah, put I'm not way. too mad at it. I do wish Kyle Lowry made it, but it's okay. And then the MVP was selected as Giannis Antento Kumpo. Antento Kumpo. Um, Bron had some words to say about said, that. I'm pissed. Arr, arr, arr. How many bonuses do you think you would have got if you got MVP? That's what I have to ask. Oh, probably a few mils. <laughs> because few in there. for him to respond like right. this. Um, don't get it twisted. Like, I'm going back to my room. I'm perfectly fine. I mean, we're up 1-0 in the Western Conference Finals. I'm absolutely fine. So don't. Like, I was pissed off at the reaction earlier when I saw it. I'm absolutely great now. I'm going back to my room, drink some wine, and sleep very well tonight. So let's not get it twisted. I'm great. Um, Man drinks wine before the game. <laughs> Rich people shit. Just, the, the voting. Anyone who explains something like it's just. It's not okay. You know it's they're about okay. to say some stuff. <laughs> so the voting. The voting. Go ahead, Bron. Let it off your chest. Just, the, the voting scale is a little weird to me sometimes. I mean, if you take 2012, if you just. Just stick with me here. 2012, 2013, I had a chance to be Defensive Player of the Year and also MVP in the same season. Um, and that year, Mark Gasol was rewarded Defensive Player of the Year. But he made second team all defense. Okay, so that doesn't make sense. It's, it's like being an MVP of the league, but you make second team all NBA. That's when I really started to look at things a little bit kind of like differently. I was like, how does that even make any sense? Um, it's like being rookie of the year, but you make second team all rookie. You know, and then I looked at the most improved this year, and rightfully so, Brandon Ingram was amazing. I, you know, I thought he should have won it. But did you see the votes that Devontae Graham get? He averaged four points last year compared to 17 and a half. Big difference. If that's not improving, what is and it's it's, it's just a, it's a weird thing sometimes that be, you just i don't know how much we are really watching the game of basketball or are we just 
in the narration mode, the narrative. You can tell LeBron hates e- ESPN. Oh, he hates every because they're all about narratives. Exactly, right? which is what he says. Like, why would he give Devontae Green? Devontae Green is a little kid, not a little kid, but he plays in a small market team. Yeah, which is this guy that plays on Brandon New Orleans. Ingram. Like even with, when I saw Ingram get it, I was like, mm. I, mean, I he's, he, he improved. Don't get me wrong, he improved a lot, but mm-hmm. like. Come on, like mm. just some, that nigga went from four points coming off the last Devon. option off the bench to starting point guard on and the even, team. And even that's what I was gonna say, right? Even beyond the statistical improvement, I was gonna say his role, yeah, became go to in a lot of ways. Yeah, and not was, to say he was number one option on the team, but in a lot of ways there. he was. He was up there. Like, yo, if <laughs> you can score, it? score. <laughs> like, we're not gonna be mad that you took up a shot. So we're not gonna be. We're not gonna. We're not gonna bench you for taking a shot. Exactly. Like, it, so it, I think he's right. Um, there is something wrong with the voting. I, I remember that that Gasol one. I remember that vividly. Me yeah. thinking in my head, like, how so? Only five other people lost to someone on the second team. Like, I'm so confused by this. I just think I, I think a lot of the people that are narrative, are making these basketball decisions don't know basketball. They, a lot of them don't. I think it's period. They some of them, are, some of them like me. Their major sport is like baseball, and they just cover basketball once in a while, yeah. so they get rights to vote. Yeah, they don't I mean, really watch the games. They don't really care to go too much of the games. Even technically, someone like my guy Skip Bayless, <laughs> not Skip Bayless, um, Fax Kellerman. Fax Kellerman. Oh, I can't. That's not my guy, Skip that's Bayless. Guy. Whoa, chill. Wait, Skip Bayless, not your guy? No, not Skip. <laughs> not Skip. 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 Skip Bayless. Um, but even my guy Fax Kellerman, the reason why he's my guy is because he's a boxing guy. Right, and now he's talking about basketball. And when he says like, ball shit, he says Kawhi is better than Kobe. You can't say that. And he's the one voting. And he's the one, and not specifically him, but, but obviously like, we're using I, him as an example. Yeah. He's the one voting. Right? So it's like. Same thing with the like Oscars so white. Like, if you get a bunch of people that watch one thing and tend to vote for another thing, they're going to be like, uh, what we know is we hear about LeBron we, all the exactly. time. Exactly. We know so, the narrative of Brandon Ingram being, being the uh, another Kevin Durant now. Exactly. Um, so we're going to go we'll ahead give it to him. Yeah. Giannis. Oh, who? yeah. Giannis. Devon, it's got to be Giannis. Devontae, who? Never heard, never heard of that. What team does he play for? Charlotte. Charlotte has a team? Oh, 4 to 17. Impressive. Oh, yeah. Uh, but well, I've, Brandon I've heard, Ingram. Brandon though. Ingram. I've, I've seen him play against Zion, with Zion. Yeah. He plays really well. Yeah. That's definitely what it comes down to. Ultimately. Ultimately, um, I mean, yeah. Let, let's let's end the show on that note. Uh, let's not go too too long yes, in this sort of final stretch of our recording. So please, with that being said, let's cue that music. <coughs> that will bring us to the end, the unfortunate end of another episode of the True North Views podcast. I always have a hardest time. The hardest time with the episodes that we don't decide the name of mm. on the podcast. Mm. So now I'm like, I don't mm. know, my jeans fit. I think it might be my jeans fit. Mm. It that might jeans. Be, I don't know. I don't know. It could be something. But please continue that conversation please as do. usual by telling please a friend. To tell 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 a friend. A friend. A friend. Please. That's a six. Six degrees of separation. That's all we you already six. know how that six, six, works. Six, 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 now, six. as usual, I go by the name of Harris. Y'all know me by now. I'm the skirt master, Mr. Triple Double himself. No, zero Cheers. assist. Uh, still 70 more from the TTC. Cheers. Cheers. You can call me just Shola. And please tell them that number one rule. Watch out for the Wastemans. Please, everyone, watch out for the Wastemans. It's a dangerous sport out there. Stay blessed. Stay, <laughs> stay warm because it's Brick City. Brick oh my City, goodness. bitch. Brick, Brick City, City, bitch. Hey, Brick City, bitch. Episode Brick, Brick City, bitch. 122. Hey. Peace.